Okay, I'll talk about the concept, the technique, and the illustration of the web applicability. So, um, trans transduced radio access uh, procedure was first mentioned in the 1980s, but its application in cardiology was first prescribed by Dr. Kamani in 2017 from Netherlands. So, up to date, there are a total of less than 200 cases described in the literature. Recently, there is a growing interest on digital radio, ex radio access, uh, largely due to media, uh, social media. This is an example of Dr. Amaz, which was my mentor's Twitter page. Um, so, talk about the anatomy. We are talking about transdigital radio access through the anatomic snuff box, which is a triangular, triangular area on the dorsal surface of the hand. Anteriorly is the extensor pollicis brevis. Uh, posteriorly is the extensor pollicis longus. The base of the uh, snuff box is formed by the uh, scaphoid bone and trapezium bones, on top of which is the distal radio access artery. On your right side is the demographic showing um, the actual puncture side of radio access and distal radio access. Um, in addition to the routine advantage that radio access has over femur access, uh, distal radio access also gives more comfortable position for the patient also is uh, more comfortable for the operator being able to stand on the right side. Um, we are able to avoid using the dominant right hand for most patients. It's also an easier coronary cannulation by using standard jacking casters. Theoretically, there is also less risk of ephemia or bleeding because the puncture side is more distal to the origin of superficial palmar branches, which gives more circulation to the hand. The way we set up at, at Princeton Baptist Center uh, I have, we have a few videos to share with you. Um, let's see if I can play here. Okay. So this is the first video showing our way to set up the patient with left arm supine and close to the right, right femoral area. So this this set, this setup is very similar to the. Uh, right femoral access. And it, it, it gives a strong support uh, stabilization of the left, left arm. Um, so next video is our um, critical step by using ultrasound guidance for this radio access. Is that a five front sheet you're using? We, we, have, we have used uh, five, six, seven, all of them in the real practice. And, and at the end of the procedure, we um, just simply use a tip top and wrap with compression tapes. This can be removed after two hours, at the same time without any restriction to patient's wrist. And remember the patient can use the right arm immediately after procedure. And no restriction to the wrist of the left arm as well. So by this setup, we have been using uh, this radio access, particularly on the left side, uh, for almost 300 cases uh, as the primary access, including routine angiogra angiography, routine PCI, uh, CTO. We have been using six, seven French, uh, also uh, catheters, both anti-grade and retrograde approaches. We also used it for complex PCI, um, also primary PCI for STEMI. We, we uh, used it for adjunctive IVERS, FFR, OCT, uh, we use it for placement of the digital embolic protection device during tyro procedures. Uh, that is through the, the right digital radio access. Um, also, we have strong support in alcohol septal ablation. Uh, this is an example of um, with over setup and left digital radio access, we have strong support during alcohol septal ablation. Um, we also did a complex PCI uh, in both left main and right coronary artery. This the first case is showing a rotational arthrectomy uh, within, with a seven French catheter in a female patient who has a impeller support from the right femoral access. The lower bottom part is the RCA intervention. We did arthrectomy also uh, get nice final results. 
Um, the limitations, like any new technique, there's always a learning curve. Um, also, currently, there's a limited availability, availability of de dedicated hemostasis aids. And it requires a dedicated cast team that are willing to do this. Uh, in conclusion, over experience support that using particularly left sided digital radio access can be a um, appealing option for both common and complicated cases. Uh, this is a, uh, picture is a newspaper report from China, who is a, a visiting cardiologist in our hospital, learned this technique, and went back to China, did the first case in his city. Um, at the end, I would like to thank to our cast team for the teaching, and uh, also my teaching attending, Dr. Van Marin and Dr. Mustafa Ahmed, who is seen there today. Um, this is the end of my talk, and I would like to answer and I'll, I'll, um, get teaching from you. Thank you. It's a good case, but I did not still uh, the same advantage you mentioned for the anatomy smart box from the left radial. We can do the same advantage. It's look like tumor. We can do the left radial in the same way. Patients can use the right radial, and I don't see any added advantage of using the snap box using the one couple of millimeter distal. Uh, what is the true advantage that you are um, trying to? True advantage is. Uh, First of all, is patient can have a more comfortable position. With first of all, uh, we don't have to um, with, with left left radio access. The patient's hands is uh, keep on left side, and with this this radio, patient's hand is still pan and close to the right femoral axis. So it's it's more similar to femoral access. Also, uh, without restriction to the uh, wrist. This is also uh, as a maybe I should go back to that picture. Uh, I saw the pictures, but yeah. you can use the exactly the same on the left radial. You just uh, get the access going, going to the opposite side, and you put your uh, left arm. And most of the places that yeah, so use the left left arm and left radial, they're using as a femoral axis. Like they put the uh, keep the arm close to the same way, exactly the same way you're using the uh, yeah. uh, close to your femoral with all the support. Um, this also. Um, Theoretically, has the less risk of uh, bleeding and ischemia because, as the picture shown here, there the distal radio access is the puncture side is more distal to the origin of uh, uh, the superficial palmar branches, which provide an extra blood circulation to the hand. Um, also, um, it, it um, the, the operator also does not need to bend over to the left side during the procedure at all. Um, Can I ask, do you have any experience yet uh, with complications? A, a 300 case volume is a good start, but at a low incident rate, you might not have seen all the complications to be seen yet. With a radial artery, even with patent hemostasis, 5% uh, or so may occlude, and while the hand survives that, you can end up with pain syndromes and the like that can be a problem. Do, do you have any sense of whether the snuff box reduces that risk or any other of the risks that we see with routine or traditional radial access? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. Um, so we, we are aware that there's about 5% of occlusion risk in the ra routine radial access. So um, according to our preliminary data now, uh, our complication is at least less than 5%. It's maybe 2.5%, 2, 2 but uh, eventually we are actually um, have an ongoing project. I'm working with the uh, fellow in the hospital to uh, continue follow up on all these 300 cases uh, with ultrasound guidance to see the long term outcomes. And I would guess that with any hematoma developing here, you'd have a different sort of compartment to, to be uh, concerned about. Um, I guess I have to confess I don't, I don't know the compartments of the hand well enough to know what I would need to be worried about, but I'd be worried. Uh, yeah, if you had yeah. a hematoma, and uh, I'm, not, I'm just wondering if you developed a hematoma here, you have that happen in the traditional radial puncture site. Usually, if you apply a second um, occluder device proximally, that, that tamps it enough and you're, you're done. Uh, what is your strategy here if you, if you apply your pressure pressing and yet the hematoma develops? What, is it just a manual hold then and get um, the hand surgeon notified, or, or what's the approach? So. Um, this is really, um, first of all, according to my knowledge, um, the, in the triangular area here, there's not much uh, nerves going through. Um, it, and, and the base of the snuff box is actually the scaphoid and the, the trapezium bone is on top of the bone. 
Um, but very practically, I, I would like us also see if my mentor has some answer for this question. <laughs> great job with all this as well. You know, the big advantage is, you know, when you do left, so I, I do left radio always for years now, but you set up as a terminal. You don't get access, get your cat team, so you annoy the cat team much less, which is very important. But also, you, you're just there. It just starts here, you're sticking here, you don't have to turn around and stick. I would never, you know, we've like switched completely, we can't imagine not doing it now. It's become that. You know, it's not just, at the beginning it was a gimmick, hey, look what we can do over here. That's become standard. With the bleeding, the compartment is very interesting. It's a completely different distribution of compartment. So, you know, 350 cases, um, at least 1% hematoma, nothing required surgery, nothing even approached a compartment. Most of these you can get off the table with manual compression. And when the hematoma does occur, it sticks very, it's interesting, it sticks, prompt, it sticks distal to the radial over here and it just goes in the hand. You just place compression, put their hand up, put some warm on it. An hour or two is gone. I've never seen one that, once again, 50,000 cases might be different. But you know, and he's doing a, a radial follow up on everyone, ultrasound, it's about 2% so far, uh, with 300 cases, so very reassuring. But you know, all, these are all, there's, a, there's all great questions about this, where the hematoma forms are very interesting. Well, terrific. Well, thank you very much. Really an, an interesting topic. Appreciate your being here. Thank you.